Hello everybody, it's so wonderful to connect on yet another video. But before I proceed with this video on voice culture, techniques and tips, I just wanted to say, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button right now and also hit the bell button and set it to all notifications switched on so that you don't miss even one upload from me. So thank you so much for all the love and adoration that you've shown for my Isai Bainam videos and for the videos on Sahityas and Carnatic music and for those videos that beautifully compare um, classical ragas and uh, their prayogas and film music. So thanks, 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 big thanks. In today's video, I'm going to share just a couple of techniques on voice culture. So this is a question that I've been asked over the last few years by several of um, my fans and followers because I am not only a Carnatic singer, I also sing film playback songs and I record quite a bit, I perform live quite a bit and the voice in these different contexts, whether it's live singing or recording, it undergoes a lot of um, uh, work, hard work and this kind of work that the vocal muscle puts in uh, requires it to be looked after very carefully and that's where uh, care for the voice comes into play. So it's really important that we as singers and vocal practitioners look after the voice and it all begins with the breath. So in today's recording, I'm just going to share a couple of tips not to overwhelm you because this is a deep subject. And in today's tip, I start with the breath work that can help support the voice beautifully across your career. Whether you're a student of music or whether you are a hobbyist or whether you're a professional performer who goes on stage quite often or who sings before a mic quite often, this breath work will help you. So first of all, focus your breath and feel your diaphragm which exists between your stomach and your lungs. It is the muscle that's responsible for the breathing. So one of the wonderful techniques that works for me before I go on stage or even before I start my practice for the day is to take a deep breath inside and slowly release the breath by way of a hissing sound between the lips. So it's kind of a sound that is uh, like the gentle hiss. Almost a very uh, light breeze that you create from your own voice. So this exercise, which involves, like I said, deep breath in. Long hissing sound, long hissing sound outwards will really restore your muscles, will give a good blood circulation to your vocal cords, will relax the muscles around your vocal cords because a lot of small muscles reside on either side of the vocal cords and around it, whether it's the sternocleidomastoid that runs like this and connects the back of the ear to the voice box and the collarbone here or the scalene muscles that reside just below your collarbone that are very significant in your breathing as a singer. They will relax these muscles and the number of repetitions you can do around 10 to 15 cycles of this nice deep breath inside, feeling your diaphragm, feeling the expansion of the lungs and then release through a gentle hiss, Re release for a long time. The longer the releases, the stronger your lungs become, the more relaxed you become. And in this practice, one of the important uh, kind of aspects that this uh, breathing exercise has is not only for singing but also it relaxes you. It activates what is called the vagus nerve which is responsible for activating the parasympathetic nervous system that is directly responsible to relaxing you. So for those of you who are experiencing um, last minute, you know, jitters before going on stage or a dash of stage fright or you might have performance anxiety that is quite serious as well. Even seasoned performers have it. 
This exercise that involves a long breath in followed by release through a hissing sound and that hissing sound is produced by keeping the tip of your tongue in between your upper and lower set of teeth and gently releasing the breath. It's a process that will assist you in all of these things to overcome little bits of anxiety and not only in music but also in life. So you can use these techniques as a singer, as a human being involved in so many things in this world and finding your way to manage anxiety and stress which we all you know have in our lives. So this exercise is the first one that I wanted to talk to you about. I'll just demonstrate it to you once more. You can do it with me. That was a long release. And even when I said that was a long release, that line came out with the same breath. So there is so much breath control available to us that we need to tap into. And this is the same hissing outward technique that comes out when we actually sing. For instance, we take a deep breath and we want to stand on a particular note for a long time. It's called Karvai in Carnatic music. And in film world as well, uh, there is an expectation to maintain the legato as we move from one note to another. So for instance, using the same technique, you take a deep breath in. Long, simple, sustained breath release. The important thing is not to be too loud when you release your breath in this way. Because loudness and amplitude um, will necessarily kind of deplete that flow, outflow of breath. So if you want to be loud deliberately, then that's a different kind of approach. And we'll talk about all of that in the coming videos. And so the second technique that I want to talk to you about today to protect your voice and to make it shine like a diamond is the humming technique. So when you start out in the morning, first thing in the morning, before you begin your routine practice of Akara Sadhagam or singing songs or scales or varnam, no matter which musical tradition you belong to, always start with a gentle hum. So in the normal Shruti of your choice, in this case, I'm singing in Shruti A. You see, Octa? Start with a simple hum, preferably in a ragam that's like Shankara Varnam or Maya Malavagola, which you're familiar with. So long, nice, full breath in and release as a gentle hum. Not too loud, not too fast, but gentle, just a hum. The hum serves to release the vocal tension that's pent up in the vocal cords. Because it's not too loud and does not engage many of the throat and mouth muscles, it's also gentle on the body the first thing in the morning. And the hum also tells us how our voice is on any particular day. If there is a bit of uh, phlegm or mucus in your throat, you will easily know when you hum. So you can gently approach it rather than be rough with it and hurt your voice. The worst thing you can do first thing in the morning is to be loud and hurt your voice. Please do not do that. Start with a gentle hum. And in fact, the pranayama technique of Brahmari also adopts a hum such as this like the hum of a bee let the omkara let this primordial sound come from you gently 
and envelop your consciousness and connect you to the universal consciousness through sound because that is the foremost form of meditation as well nadi yoga that is yoga through singing is most powerful because it involves breath work so as singers to protect our voices the best way is to begin with nadi yoga in the morning so to summarize first we start with that big breath followed by a release through a hissing sound long release secondly begin your day's practice or any performance practice with a gentle hum so thank you all so much for tuning in today into this episode on voice culture and some techniques and tips to help you realize your maximum vocal potential if you haven't hit subscribe button yet hit the subscribe button and make sure that the bell button is set to all notifications enabled so that you don't miss even one upload from me this is chawla tamani signing off have a fantastic fantastic day ahead namaskar